Hi, my name is Mani Ali Kani. I am Dean and Professor at Citor Academy, and I'd like to welcome you to another session of Citor Channel. Today, as part of the Back to the Clinic, I'd like to share with you a very interesting case. We all know about the effect of the nasal cavity on oral cavity. Based on the functional matrix theory, especially capsular matrix theory, the breathing affects the growth of the maxilla. But can oral cavity also affect the form and shape of the nasal cavity? Today we're going to explore that. Nasal septum is made from a cartilage part and the bony part. The bony part is a combination of vomer and perpendicular plate of the ethmoid. Nasal septum deviation is a very common problem. People consider the etiology of nasal septal deviation either genetics, uh, trauma, or sometimes maxillary deficiency. If deviation is severe, can cause significant problems. For example, chronic sinusitis, nasal airway obstruction, uh, sleep apnea. And with that, can push the patients toward mouth breathing and the side effects that is associated with mouth breathing. Well, to address the severe nasal septal deviation, surgery is usually is the best option. However, in the children, it has been shown that application of expander actually can help the nasal septal deviation significantly. But the information on adult is uh, contradictory. Sometimes application of expander seems to benefit and sometimes it does not. Let's look at this case. A patient was referred to CITOR Academy mid-treatment to receive non-surgical treatment for severe skeletal deformity that he had. He already started the treatment someplace else and mid-treatment he changed his mind he did not want to go through the orthogonatic surgery even though they have extracted the upper first premolar lower second premolar classic approach and now he wanted to receive non-surgical treatment. If we look at the extraoral and intraoral pictures of this patient we notice patient has a classic class 3 profile and intraoral exam demonstrated class 3 uh, molar and canine we had severe crossbite chant of occlusal plane posteriorly and anteriorly and mandible significantly shifted toward the right side when we look at the pan we notice some uh, small areas of root resorption and when we're looking at the cef a skeletal class 3 patterns was confirmed but when we took a CBCT, we find a very interesting finding. Severe nasal septal deviation, a polyp in the nasal cavity, a large one, and a canted nasal floor. Patient was complaining that he cannot breathe through the nasal cavity and mostly he adopted the mouth breathing, which could explain the, some of the etiology of the malocclusion. At the same time, patient was not very comfortable with TMJ, had a severe clicking. So all this together required some orthopedic and orthodontics intervention to address these problems. We decided to address the transverse problem with the expander, make sure that we get cortical drift of alveolar bone using periosteal assimilation. Uh, at the same time, try to address the retraction of the lower teeth using sectional mechanics to make sure you don't get farther root resorption. We add mops or macroosseo perforation. Uh, we stimulate the cortical drifting in the sagittal plane using two couple system to um, stimulate a condylar remodeling. We use high frequency acceleration and at the same time increase the bone density after treatment using high frequency acceleration and. Uh, after that, a uh, classic orthodontics treatment was applied. Let's see what was the result of all this work. If you look at the profile of this patient, you notice significant improvement in profile. Dentally, molar and canine shows class one relationship, midline is on, there is no cant of occlusal plane, uh, posteriorly, anteriorly, crossbite is not there. Panorex shows no further root resorption, a remodeling of the condyle. Ceph demonstrates significant improvement of skeletal class 3 relationship. Superimposition of before and after of the Ceph analysis demonstrate autorotation of the mandible, slight advancement of the maxilla. And when we're looking at the nasal cavity transverse dimension, we notice modest increase about 1 or 2 millimeter in nasal cavity. However, when we're looking at the nasal septal deviation, significant improvement in nasal septal deviation was observed. 
the size of the polyp decreased significantly and similar to the cant of occlusal plane that disappeared, the cant of the nasal flow disappeared. These changes in nasal cavity could not be addressed by expander. As I said, it was a very modest change in transverse dimension. However, the whole biomechanic of oral cavity has changed, which means the a biomechanic of nasal cavity, the occlusal forces that was transferring to the nasal septum and to the walls of oral cavity, they have been changed too. In response to these balance forces, it seems that the nasal cavity has remodeled itself to align better with these occlusal forces. And this is nothing new. A long bones experiment showing the curvature of the bone is dictated by the forces, the stress and a strain that the long bone receives. Changing that can change the alignment of the bone. This does not mean that we do not need uh, to correct the nasal septal deviations through the surgical approach, but it emphasizes additional benefit of orthodontic treatment for the patients that require to go through the orthopedic and orthodontic treatment. And if they have a nasal septal deviation, they may benefit from that at the end and they get remodeling of nasal cavity and therefore improve in the function. This patient demonstrated improved, significant improvement in breathing and demonstrated significant improvement in the TMJ function. I hope you enjoyed this session of CTOR channel. If you have not subscribed to our channel, please go ahead and subscribe and please don't forget to press the like button. Thank you.